Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at complex numbers in Java. Now, Java, surprisingly, does not have complex numbers built in. And I find that surprising um, because the language came after C++ with the intention of being better than C++. But Java never ever fixed this. Now, one of the things I complain about that even when C++ went to adding it as a standard, they could have just made it much cleaner to use in the language. And um, Java's done this when they extended a the language to add generics, uh, which is just a template when we look at that sort of thing, we'll see the similarities between C++ templates and Java generics. And even when that Lambda functions in Java 8, you know, the syntax changed. Um, so it was up to the community to come up with something. And so um, there are a number of libraries out there, but the one I'm going to use is by Apache. And so we'll get to that later. But again, we're going to try and do the same thing, you know, declare or um, define two complex number or a few, and then add them, multiply them, or take the power of some of those ap operations. I haven't been too strict with the operation in terms of if it's power or absolute value, because it doesn't really matter. What I want to, what I want to show is that there are these two classes of operations that when it comes to numbers, this has like the basic number, add, multiply, subtract, divide, and then the more advanced stuff that you want to do, like power, absolute value, and all these other things. So enough talking, let's jump in and take a look. All right, so one of the first thing I want to do, of course, is always prepare our directories for today's session. So I'm going to start with our Go code that we had before. And of course, I have to make it Java. So I'm going to rename my main that Go to main with uppercase because remember Java have these restrictions that the file name have to mirror the public class um, in that file. And so of course um, I have to change a number of things including um, creating a public class main to match the file name and then of course our main function have to have a specific signature and then um, just keep things simple I'm going to comment out most of our code right now because we're not sure what that complex library we're going to use um, looks like so we can't make any assumption about how it can be it should be used just make sure that we have a val valid java application that we could run okay so that's good we have that going at the time of this writing java 8 is the latest so what i'm going to do is go look for complex number support in java 8 and then we'll see that what's supported and so the best place to go is actually to the horse's mouth and that is the java 8 documentation from oracle so if we click on that and then go over to the documentation here we can see for the number classes remember java have classes to represent um corresponding to the num numbers because it does wrapping or boxing of those basic types so if we look in java 8 there's no complex and then if we change this to java 7 uh, we'll see it all the fewer numeric types but no still no complex and we can do the same thing and go look at java 6 and see um, obviously they wouldn't remove complex if that is in the language and there's no complex in the lang in Java 6 and also in 5. So we can now turn our attention to trying to find a library that we can use because we've just checked and we do not see complex number in either Java 8, 7, 6, or 5. So I'm going to type complex number library for Java in my web browser and hit search and I get back a list like this. And notice one of the very first one there in the result is the mat library from the commons, Apache commons. Uh, which is what I mentioned much earlier in the video. So you're going to click on that and then you're going to be taken to the complex section in this library's documentation. And if you're not, then just scroll down and look for the complex uh, on the left hand side, look for complex number and click on it. And you see a brief sort of overview of how you might use the library. Um, it doesn't get into too much detail. If you actually want to see more details about a class, you have to click on the complex class there link. And um, now we'll show you how you create a complex number using the constructor, some of the functions, and so on. So we're going to go download this. So I'm going to hit the download link. And um, the one available to me at the time of this recording was math 3.6.1. So I'm going to download that and save it to my system. Also, I'm going to go ahead and go to the command line and just extract this into my directory, which is the project directory we're working. Right? So this is another Java directory. And then I'm going to rename this directory from commons math three da, 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 to just libs because I don't want to be typing that much. So just rename it. it. Doesn't take any time. All right. And so I think we were pretty much set now to get back to our code. 
When I run my main um, that Java inside um, Visual Studio Code, it created this main that class file for me. So let's remove it and remind ourselves how we compile Java um, classes from the command line and run them also when we have a class, how we rerun it. And then if we have libraries that we want to use, how we modify our class path to run it with in terms of compiling the application and running it. And so um, once we've reminded ourselves of that and know we look like we can successfully put that class in our class path compile, but of course in our Java code, we're not using anything from that library yet, so let's go do that. From the class documentation, we know this is the path, the package directory, the package name for that class. So we can go, and from the documentation, we know what it's like to, what we have to use for the constructor. So we can go construct a new complex object and we can print it out. And now if we go back to the command line, seeing that we know how to compile now and run, we can go try and see if we can run this successfully. Okay, so now we try to compile our um, application again, or class, and it fails. This time it's saying, hey, um, I don't really know what complex is, and then look at the path, it's saying math four. Now, if you remember, we said we're using the math three library, and there it is. So it looks like we have to modify something in our application. We're using the wrong package, and also we didn't actually include the class. We just had the, the package there, name right there. Um, even though it's a complete package name, we still didn't say what it is that we want from that package. So let's fix that now. Once we go back, fix the correct, um, say that we want to use the complex class in this package and we recompile, it works. And then we can run and this works. So this is a very, very simple usage of that complex number and we can get it to work. So now we can go back, modify the rest of our application and see what happens. Now that we have some idea how to use this library. So of course we're going to uncomment our code. Of course, we can't use variable. We have to say complex. Then for print line, we can use comma, but we have to say we append concatenating strings and Java is going to be smart enough to take our object and call it to string method. Um, for simplicity, we'll just separate um, the creation of Z4 and Z5 onto separate lines. We have to call the multiply and um, get imaginary um, methods on our object to get imaginary number. But once we've done all that and compile and run again, as you can see, now it's successful. We have a successful application, pretty much doing all the same things our previous application, and there's the result. So all in all, not too bad. Sucks that Java 8 didn't have complex number built in. We cannot use the imaginary like I or J to represent a complex number. We always have to go to creating a, a, an object using new, for example. And this is going to be the same case for all the JVM languages. So we're going to use the same library for um, Groovy and Scala, as we will see. Um, just because even though those languages come after Java, they too did not include a complex number in the um, language. Don't know why, but that's what it is. We could stop here, but I want to take an opportunity to show you something. Um, so, so far, our application is in our main Java class is, is not in a package directory, it's not in any package. So let's create a package directory called com that's traversing their complex, and we can just drag our main that Java into it. Now this doesn't change nothing, anything much. Our approach is still work. And of course we have to put our declare and say that our in source that our this class is in this package. So we do the online one. Now let's go back and recompile everything. And of course to recompile this, we have to specify the path of a Java class is, but notice where that class ends up. And so now if we want to run our application, we have to say that that class is in this package. How do we say it's in this package? Well, we have to specify the full pa package name for that class. But notice our class path mention the current directory. So when you start navigating down looking for com that's traversity that complex that main, it's going to take into account that I have to look on the class path dot and that that is our current directory and that includes the directory com forward slash traversity slash complex and then in there is that main that class. We just don't have to specify that class at the end. So we covered this before. So this works. So what does this really buy me? Well, I just want to show you that how, um, one, we kind of covered briefly when we talk about how the different languages allow you to break up your application. But I want to show you that so now we can prepare ourselves for using something to build or take care of building our application that we don't have to do it by um, ourselves on the command line, always type in Java complex and specifying all these libraries to use. What if we have hundreds of libraries or 10? We want to be, wouldn't want to be managing our class path. Now I said, so um, I showed you before using a make file, which is the way you do sort of do things with C, C++ and Go. But um, Java in the JVM world, they have their own build tools and that doesn't really quite work for C, C++, and Go, but it works very well for the JVM languages. And so for a long time, they had ant 
A and T, and then Ivy, and then Maven came along. It's been around for a number of years, and then now it's being challenged by Gradle. And all that is just history and FYI and extra information that you don't really care about. But today we're going to look at using Maven. And it's very still very popular, and it wouldn't hurt you to learn a little bit of Maven. And that's that hard to use. So basically, what we're going to go do is go download Maven, install it, and I have it installed already. So I'm not going to show you how to install it. You can find that on the website. And then I want to do is create a simple Maven project. And for that, you're going to see me go to the web. I'm going to look for simple Maven project. And then I'm going to modify the command to say that the group ID is come that's traversity that complex. The artifact I'm creating, which is the thing, is going to be just complex in this case. I'm going to go up one directory from where we are, and I'm going to run the Maven command there. That's going to create a directory with the Maven project in it. And let's, let's ignore the Maven project for now. Once that's done, it's going to spend a lot of time downloading a bunch of dependencies, and that's what Maven is like. So one thing that's going to frustrate Maven is to download a lot of things that you seem like if you don't need, but ignore it. It's managing the dependencies, so it's taking that out of your hands, so don't worry about it. Now we can move everything that Maven created into our project directory, our Java project directory. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm essentially turning our project into a Maven project. I will see how we do it. It's very easy. Now, when, once the files are in there, we go back and we look at our project now from the um, Visual Code Editor, and we examine that POM file. Um, we'll see that um, it is an XML file, but some of the things that we type on the command line for that command to generate the simple Maven project ended up inside this file in terms of the group ID, the artifact, and where we didn't have to specify version number. But the other thing that POM file contains is a dependency for JUnit, which is on this library, whose group ID is JUnit, artifact is JUnit, and the version is 381. It's saying that I depend, my project depend on JUnit. We're not going to use JUnit, so I'm actually going to remove it um, later. Um, but right now, the thing that I want to search for is the commons math um, library, and I wanted to find the uh, version that I can use in Maven. And so I'm going to look for the group ID for Apache Commons. And here's a dependency that shows me what to put in. So I'm going to replace that in my pump file. So I only need to replace the dependency that was in there for JUnit with the dependency I want, which is on this um, common Apache um, math library. And notice the other fact, the group ID is or the Apache the Commons. So you could think of that as the company or whoever or the project. And then artifact ID is the thing, the library or application or whatever. And then, of course, the version. So now that I have that, but before we go build our application, let's just clean up a few things that we don't need. So Maven, like I said, included the JUnit test. And when we had compiled our application, we had the main that class there. So we can move that. And if you look, you can see that, oh, there's a similarity between the directory structure that we had before and the directory structure in our Maven project. So we could just move our main, that Java, into the complex directory inside the Maven source, main, Java, blah, 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 and put it parallel to app.java. But we really don't even need the app.java because we are providing our own main now, so our entry point to the application, so we can delete that. And then the test directory, there's a test application that depends on JUnit, but remember, we removed JUnit, so we don't need this test application now. And now we could delete the old directory that we had. And so basically, all I did was move our main.java into the directory created by Maven. And that directory was similar to ours, except it was source main, Java, and then the package directory. And we'll see, if you play with Maven, you'll see the reason why it has that directory structure. Okay, so, so that's fine and dandy. Um, the next thing we want to do is um, notice that before we leave and go build our application, that in our Maven or Pomba XML, we can put any number of dependencies. So um, after line 6, 15, you can just add more dependencies similar to the one that we have. So you can just list all your bit dependencies. Say if you have 20 of them, 100, you just put them in this file and you don't have to worry about your path. Now let's go compile our application and we'll see just how easy it is to do now that we have Maven. So we can say Maven clean. So clean up any mess you've made and then package. And so that's the target that's already been defined by Maven. We can add additional targets if we want, override anyone, but that's the one we're going to use the built-in ones. Okay. And so our application, again, Maven, because we said clean, I had to download a number of files, but the end result is this target directory with a jar. And that's because our XML or POM file on line six says to package up our application as a jar. And so now we have complex dash version number of our artifact, and now we should be able to run it. Now, if you remember, um, if we can look inside of our jar to see what's in there, and we see it's just our class, and some other things. But there are no other classes in here. So the class that we use to compile, which is the math library, 
is not in here. Now we could have told Maven to include it in our jar, to look in that jar and put all the other jars that we depend on and we would need to build what's called an Uber jar so that you don't have any runtime dependencies. But no, we have to, in order to when we're ready to run our application, provide that mat commons jar because we didn't include the classes in our jar. Does that make sense? So our jar application is simply our jar alone and none of the classes that it depends on. So we can go, um, since I deleted it, I'm gonna extract it again and of course rename it to libs again. And the reason I deleted it was just to show it how I am, when I compile, I'm not depending on it. Now if we try to run our application now, it's gonna fail because, well, we're not, we don't have like a class file. But if we specify the jar um, that we just built, it should work. And this failed because um, I need to make a correction on the command line. And so I'm uh, missing a R for the jar and now it works just as before. So again, no surprise, pretty straightforward. The only thing we really did was use Maven to build our jar. And you might think that's a lot of work to accomplish that little feat, but it's better than us having to try and specify the class path and manage class path. Now, when I had to run it, I still had to specify class path, but in that case, I only had to specify the our jar and the jar I depend on. Now, you can, like I said, instruct Maven to include the dependencies in your application jar and therefore there's only one jar you really need to specify when you go to compile and run. Uh, additionally, you could have these jars commons install in the um, Java library where it's going to always look for jars so you don't really have to keep specifying it. So there's still one other benefit for using Maven. If you go to our application right now and you try to edit the code and basically try to create a complex number and try to get some help on what a complex number or to use it or anything of that sort, you don't get any help, right? You type P that and it doesn't show you any sort of completion. So one thing you can do is if you quit the editor and you go back in, um, now when your editor starts back up and you again try to create a complex number, notice how the help shows up this time. And that's because when Visual Studio Code reloaded, it noticed that oh, you're using a Maven project and it says, oh, I understand Maven projects. I know how to parse the dependencies and so on. I said, no, we can get help for using complex number. So if there's no other reason, if you don't like the idea of using Maven um, to build in your jar, <clears throat> excuse me, one reason you might actually want to use it is for this. Is so for those libraries that you're going to be using that Visual Studio doesn't know about because they're not part of the language, you can have Maven um, specify them as dependencies and now Visual Studio Code knows how to go um, parse those jars and look for the source and the documentation and present it to you. Okay, so that's a lot. Um, let's wrap this up. It's a pretty long video. Um, follow me on Twitter, um, Stroversity1. Instagram is Stroversity. Um, again, for those of you who want to contribute and can, so if you want to and can, um, I'm included in the description below, um, link to some places that you can contribute, um, whether it's digital currency or uh, PayPal. Um, other than that, um, thanks for your time. Appreciate you. Come and check out the video, stick with me. Um, See you in the next video. Um, next week, I'm traveling, so there won't be any video next week. I'm going to try and see if I could make one or two to before I travel. But just in case I get too busy and I can't upload a video, just heads up, no video next week if you keep in pace. Regret that, but I have to travel for work, and usually when I travel, it's very, very difficult to make videos. So I'll see you again in the next video, which I'll try and post another one or two for this week. Um, but we'll see. Okay. Um, take care. Thanks. Thumbs up the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.